By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And as you can see in the background, we are continuing with our EDH battle. This is part number two of a two-part video. If you've missed part one, I strongly advise you to first check out part one. It's like an hour long, but it's worth your while. It's, oh man, it's such a cool game. Just a little refresher where we're at at the moment. So we're playing EDH, old school style. So with cards from 1993 and 1994, we're all playing with different commanders, old school commanders. And if you maybe wanna know all the ins and outs about the rules we follow, please check the description below because there you can find rules info and you can also see what old school cards you can play uh, when you want to play old school with commanders. So for example, I'm playing Uncle Istvan. I've got the wood elemental playmat and obviously that is not a legendary creature, but it's one of those creatures that uh, you can actually play when you're playing EDH old school in a certain rule set. So I'm playing mono black. Then opposite to me is sitting Avert. He's playing Bartol Rune X. So he's playing with green, red and black. And next to him is um, Gideon, and he's playing with Soul Canard, the Swamp King, and he's also got the Soul Canard playmat. He's been a pain in the ass for me this entire match, by the way. And he's playing with red, blue, and um, black. And then opposite to him and next to me is Frank. He's playing with the Protocol Sorcerer playmat. So that's not me, but that's Frank. And he's playing with Deccan Blackblade. So that means his deck is black, blue, and white. So we're all playing with the color black. I think that's pretty cool. Um, so where are we at? You can see the life total here at the bottom, so you can see where everybody's at. Um, and that's it, basically. I think we're now ready to, to jump in where we left off. So this is part number two. Let's see who is going to win this EDH battle. Enjoy. Part number two of this EDH match. So at the end of this video, we'll know who is actually going to win this. All four of us are still in it to win it and we see Gideon, it's his turn right now. He's on 11 and he's got a pretty interesting board state. Old Man of the Sea, he's got Dredge Skeleton, great blocker for that uh, with that regeneration ability. He's got his uh, Phantom Monster there, he's got a 3-3 Flyer, he's got that Chaos Orb which is really good uh, looking at it from a political perspective. And look at this, I'm using my Demonic Hordes to kill, destroy the safe haven of Frank. That means he's gonna lose his Sarah Angel as well and he's untapping right now. And he's playing with that Fizuvan Double Ganger, which is a 5-6 Ma Multi Jinn, a Flyer. He's playing with Deccan Blackblade, of course. That's his commander, it's a 6-6. Six, six. And he's also playing with Half Dane, which is, I believe, still a copy of the Rock Hydra there that's on the side of Avert's board. So that's a 12-12. It's actually not a copy. It only copies power and toughness of a creature on the board. So, yeah, this is kind of silly. And there we see Gideon looking at Rackman. That's a card on my side of the board. I believe it's a 2-1 creature and for three black I can tap it and then target opponent has to show me his hand and then if there's a creature in it, he has to discard a creature at random. And there is the attack with the Mahamoti, but there's a terror, beautiful terror made by MTG Underground. And uh, he sent that to me with a whole bunch of other cards, man. Thank you so much for doing that. He's, uh, he's really a great guy, a lover of the game. And it's so much fun to play with his cards to play with his altars, and I'm using it here to destroy the Vesuvan Doubleganger of Frank, which is good for me, because I'm on 15, and if that attack would have succeeded, I would have dropped to 10, using my Knowledge Vault here to put another card under the Knowledge Vault, and I'm actually sacking my Knowledge Vault. So the way Knowledge Vault works, you pay two and tap, and you put a card under the Knowledge Vault, and at any time you can sacrifice the Knowledge Vault to get those cards, but you have to discard your hand. Now, as you can see, my hand was empty anyway, so I just used it to just draw a couple of extra cards. So three cards in total, by the way, and there you see that counter going on uh, my Demonic Hordes, that's from the Taggle Maggot. Ooh, look at this, casting a Frozen Shade, one black and two, an O1 Summon Shade. And for one black, I can give it a plus one, plus one. That's, of course, a really good card in my deck. I still have the Hive as well, so I can make a lot of smaller creatures. The thing that really annoys me, though, about this board state is that Old Man of the Sea by Gideon. I mean, he can steal my commander. That's just not good. Okay, and there's a Scavenger Folk being played by Avert. So Avert's on 19 at the moment. The only player on the table that plays with green... And actually, that scavenger folk is not too shabby. There we see an attack with the Rock Hydra. He's attacking Frank right now. 
12, 12, kind of pointing at his life total, saying your highest, your, and, and that's true, he's at 22. And is he going to take the damage? Is he going to do it? Is he going to drop to 10? Is the Rock Hydra going to deal some damage? No, he's actually blocking it. Or is he not? He looks like he is. So he's chump blocking it with Deccan Blackblade. And here we see Gideon using his Glasses of Urza. And if I'm not mistaken, actually, there should be counter should be taken off the Rock Hydra. You have to understand this game's been going on for quite a while. We've been playing for like three hours, three and a half hours now. And um, or at least at least three. So we're not all too sharp anymore. And there we see Gideon recasting a Soul Canard to Swamp King. Wow. He's got so much mana. And I've I've made a huge mistake here. I should have, of course, used my demonic hordes in the end step of Avert's turn to destroy a land on the side of Gideon, preventing him from um, being able to recast the Soul Canard, the Swamp King. And here I'm using the Rackman, which is actually another mistake. Story guys, we're making quite a lot of sloppy plays here because Rackman, you can only use it in your own turn. It's just like Disrupting Scepter. So I'm using it here in the end step of Gideon, but that's actually not possible. So sorry, Frank, you're, you're losing a Singir Vampire here for nothing. I'm, of course, doing it because of that ivory tower on the side of Frank, who's gaining life again, going up to 24. So I want to make sure that he doesn't gain two life, but um, it doesn't gain three life, but two life instead. And here we see, oh, man, this is comedy capers. We're making so many mistakes because right now Frank is using his control magic to steal Bartle Ruinax. And as you can see, it's clearly on the text rules text of Bartle Ruinax. It cannot be enchanted. Oh, man. Sorry, sorry for all the mistakes. Hopefully, like later in the game, we'll we'll change this back because this is a pretty big mistake. This has a big impact on the the board state and on the scenario here. So Bartle Ruinex, just to clarify, you cannot play control magic on Bartle Ruinex. It's not possible. And let's see what else we're gonna do. So um Gideon wants to see my hand, so passing the hand over to him. Playing a swamp. What else can I do? I do have the Hive there, so I could just pass turn, use the Hive later. So now I am using the Rackman in my own main phase the way it's intended. Perhaps I just found out that I can only use it in my main phase. Oh man, so many sloppy plays. At least Frank couldn't play out the Sengir Vampire, that's something. But So the Rock Hydra should have a couple of counters less, and that Bartle Runex needs to go back to Avert. Hopefully we'll correct that in the game. But this is how it goes sometimes. You have to understand, you know, this is this was a great match to play. Um, we're all amongst friends. We're having fun, which is the way you should play Magic. You know, mistakes are always made. And there we see Gideon looking at the table, looking at his own hand. Is there a terror in his hand there? I believe a terror, a detonate, and a boomerang. Oh, here we see Avert finding out. Oh, wait a minute. You can't do this. So now I hope that Frank is going to use his control magic. Yeah, there we see the thumbs up from Frank. Yeah, I, uh, I screwed up, guys. Well, actually, Frank, we all did because nobody saw it at first. We all should have corrected you here. Anyway, we have decided that he can still play out his control magic and he can choose a new target. That is bad news for, for Gideon because now he's taking the Soul Canard to Swamp King. I'm really happy with this because I want Gideon to use his Chaos Orb on that control magic. And if he doesn't, then he doesn't. But at least... I want, I want to put him in, in in a tough position where he has to make that decision. It's his turn still, by the way, and it looks like he's going to use it. So we're going to put it on slow-mo. We're going to see a nice flip by Gideon. Is he going to hit it? If he misses this, would be great news for Frank. No, there's a hit. Very good flip. Control Magic is a gunner. Soul Canard the Swamp King returns to its rightful owner. Oh, man, the Soul Canard is such a pain. At least he cannot attack with it now because it, it has summoning sickness again. And let's see. That, that, that terror actually, it looks like a great card, but it's not that useful. It can take care of the Rock Hydra, I guess, but all the other creatures have some black in them, so they cannot be targeted by the terror. I think the boomerang is really handy. He probably wants to keep two blue up. I could, of course, use my demonic hordes to destroy another blue source. That's probably what I should do on the side of Gideon, but I'm I'm probably waiting for the end step of Frank to really do anything with my Demonic Hordes. And my Demonic Hordes is, you know, slowly dying. 
There is a bad moon on the board as well, by the way. So my demonic quartz is a 6-6. Six, six. So it can take some more counters. The way Taggle Maggot works is every upkeep, you've got to put a minus 0, minus 1 counter on your creature. So it goes really, really slow. Using it right now to destroy a land on the side of Frank, which I think is not the best idea. Using the High Fear, by the way, to create a Wasp token, a 1-1 one, one Flying Summon Insect for 5 mana. Yeah, that's the way token making works in the old olden days, in old school. It was considered very magical that you would be able to just create a creature out of nowhere. It was considered a very strong ability. Ooh, this is really cool. Sorceress Queen, aka Scarlet Witch, sent to me by Martin from the Rhineland Adventures together with Michael. Danke. And as you can see, I'm playing with this card. Love it. I love these, these altars with stories. I just enjoy them so much. And EDH is a perfect environment, or, or Highlander is a perfect environment to play with these cards. So Sorcerer's Queen, in case you don't know, it's originally a card from Arabian Nights. You can tap it to make target creature an O2. It's pretty good, but again, my biggest problem here is that Gideon can also steal it. Attacking with the Frozen Shade, probably forgetting that it doesn't have flying. That's one of the things. Here you see Gideon just blocking with Dredge Skeletons. He's like, okay, you want to attack, whatever. So a bit of a misplay on my side of the board as well. And uh, the thing is, Frozen Shade, it looks like it flies, but it doesn't have flying. Love the art, by the way, of Frozen Shade. And there's the attack by the Rock Hydra, going to attack Frank again. Frank is now in 25, by the way. Oh, is that, yeah, Blue Elemental Blast taking care of the Rock Hydra. Rock Hydra is gone. Wow. So Frank is doing a really good job at protecting himself, actually. So he's still got that, you know, Rock Hydra Power Toughness copy himself. So he still has a 12-12, and he's got an Ivory Tower, and he's on 25. But looking at purely at the board, I would say Gideon's got the best board together with me. I just have a lot of stuff on my board, but it's not really great. And I think what we saw, by the way, at the end step of Gideon, he used his Old Man of the Sea to steal my Wasp token, then used his Sage of Letnam to sacrifice the wasp token because it's an artifact creature and draw a card from that. So actually by making a 1-1 wasp, all that I've done is give Gideon an extra card. So I've invested five mana. Man, I need to get my A game back together or I'm not going to win this here. We see a Fisher in hand of Gideon. Fisher, a card from the dark, two red and three, destroy target creature or land. And the cool thing about this card is it's an instant. So I know it's expensive five, but it's an instant. And the instant speed makes it really good and really useful at these, uh, these longer multiplayer formats. Is he going to attack with Solkanar the Swamp King? I think the only problem for Gideon here is his life total. He's so low on life. He's on 10. I mean, he's probably hoping for me to keep casting black spells. Remember, Solkanar the Swamp King gives its controller one life every time a black spell is being cast. Here we see an attack with Phantom Monster on Frank, so he's at least going to drop a little bit to 22. He's not going to gain any life anymore from the Ivory Tower. Ooh, Transmute Artifact! Card from Antiquities. We've seen it before. Gideon was casting it uh, in part one of this video. And what is he going to look up? So he can now maybe look up a... Uh, a Nevenerals Disc, that would be kind of sweet. So how Transmute Artifact works is you can sacrifice a creature, then you can tutor for any artifact, and you've got to pay for the extra uh, uh, mana casting cost above the casting cost that the artifact had that you sacrificed. So in this case, Frank is sacrificing Ivory Tower, which has a casting cost of one, so he's got to pay three extra because um, Nevenerals Disc has a casting cost of four. And there I'm using my Demonic Hordes again. And I'm still not targeting. <laughs> I'm still not targeting Gideon for some reason. I'm just taking it one at a time. I have enough reason to actually target him. But I guess I'm just going clockwise doing Frank first, now Avert. And then next up is, um, is Gideon here. So going to draw a card. And I'm making another Wasp token. I really don't understand why. Because... Gideon can just steal my wasp token again and get an extra card. So I'm giving Gideon a card. Am I using politics here? Is, is something going on that, you know, because we don't have audio. Has something been discussed here? 
So I'm attacking with the wasp token because I made it on the end step of Frank. So I'm attacking with my frozen shade. And he's blocking on his scavenger folk, sacking his scavenger folk to destroy the hive. I'm using the hive one last time. Interesting. So choosing to destroy the hive, it doesn't really matter because the Nevenerals disc is on the board. And I also guess that Aver doesn't really mind if the Nevenerals disc goes off. Also attacked, I believe Gideon, by the way. No, I attacked Frank with that wasp token. So Frank's going to drop to 21. He's still really high up, of course. So I guess the table doesn't really mind. And here we see that trick again by Gideon. Stealing my wasp token, sacking it to the Sage and drawing an extra card. He must be really happy with me. I mean, why am I? Is he my sponsor or something? Why am I helping him? And uh, Gideon looking at his cards. I think he wants to keep two up to use that boomerang in response to the Nevenerals disc. Or maybe he wants to use his detonate against the Nevenerals disc. But on the other hand, maybe he just wants the table to get cleared up. He can, of course, then use his boomerang to get his best creature, save his best creature. And of course, it will also destroy half Dane. It will destroy a lot of creatures on my side of the board. So maybe he doesn't really mind seeing the Nevenerals disc getting resolved next turn. He's kind of looking at it again. It looks like he's got a pretty good hand. Of course, he can regenerate the Drudge Skeleton. I believe he's got a Drowned in hand as well. Attacking with Phantom Monster, attacking Frank is going to drop to 18. So Frank's slowly going down in life again. And there we see Drowned, a card from the Dark. One blue and one, one black to regenerate a 1-1 one, one creature. That, of course, works really well with the Nevenerals disc. And now the question is, is he going to pop the disc in his own turn? And then play something out. Ooh, we see a Spirit Link attack. Here on Gideon. Interesting. I can make it an O2 creature with my Sorcerer's Queen. There is the block. And actually I'm doing nothing. So Frank's going to go back on 30. And then he's using the disc. And to be honest, I'm now kind of digging back in my memory. But I think I completely forgot to use my Sorcerer's Queen. What I should have done here is use my Sorcerer's Queen on um, the creature of uh, Frank, making an O2, then he wouldn't get all this life because now he's up to 30. So this is a really, really good deal for uh, for Frank here. And of course, my, my Bad Moon's gone. I mean, I can save my Wall of Bow and I can regenerate it. But yeah, and of course, Daggle Mag is gone. Bad Moon's gone. I'm not, I'm not sure why it's still on the battlefield. But I really should have used my Sorcerer's Queen against that Half Dane. And this is pretty cool. I'm getting my Nether Shadow back. So the way Nether Shadow works, if, if it's got three creatures above it, then it comes back into play and it also has haste. So, I mean, it's just a 1-1. One, one. Ooh, this is a good card. Finding a Greed. Problem, of course, is I'm on 15. I'm not all too high up. Attacking Frank for one, so he's going to drop to 29. I feel really stupid. I could have just made the Half Dane into an 0-2 and, and, and he would be like, I don't know, 12 lives less. Anyway, what happens, happens. And uh, looks like I'm losing my Nether Shadow here as well, by the way. Not sure why. And using Greed twice, going to go to 11. And there I go. I'm playing... What's that land called again? I'm playing Safe Haven, that's it. And there we see a Ring of Renewal from Avert. And we see a Crumble here. What is he going to Crumble? Oh, he's going to discard the Crumble, that's it. So he's going to discard the Crumble to Ring of Renewal. Ring of Renewal, really good card from Fallen Empires. You, sac you uh, discard a card at random. And then you get to draw two new cards. So he had he discarded his crumble because it was the only card in hand. And he drew a Mistress Factory and a Mana Vault. I guess not a great draw, but at least he's got those two cards out of his hand. And next turn he can use his Ring of Renewal again. And then he's going to use his Mana Vault. He's going to recast Bartle Rune Axe. So a 6-5. And when you attack with Bartle, you don't have to tap it. So it's got Vigilance. And you cannot enchant it, okay? You cannot. We saw that happen before. We're not going to make that mistake again. 
So this is a pretty good turn here actually for Avert. And there we see a Nevenerals disc. Wow, on the side of Gideon, so many discs right now. A little bit insane, so much control. And I mean, he's got the detonate. I wonder if he wants to use the detonate against the Ring of Renewal or if he just wants to wait and use his disc to get rid of the Ring of Renewal, not attacking with his Drowned or his Drudge Skeleton. Frank is doing nothing, just passing turn. I'm playing a Swamp. I still got the Greed, but I'm so low on life right now. I'm on 11. Can I really play out anything? And, oh, look at this. I'm actually playing out my Breeding Pit. This is an Altar, an Artist Proof. And on the back, you can see this picture made by Anson Maddox. Thank you, Anson, for this beautiful Altar. But I think it's really stupid that I'm playing it right now with an Evernal's Disc on the board. Okay, I'm taking it back. <laughs> the thing is, I'm just so excited to play it out. And... Maybe as you notice, uh, I'm just making a lot of mistakes at this point in the match. So hopefully I can kind of get it back together. We'll just have to see. Luckily, my table is quite forgiving. There we see a Demonic Tutor being cast by Avert. What is he going to look up now? A draw seven would be really nice right now, but he's already played Wheel of Fortune earlier in the game. The disc is on. Is he, does he want to take care of the disc? That could be that could be an option, you know. I mean, the disc is going to be a problem for Ape because he wants to keep his Ring of Renewal. You know, Ring of Renewal is very valuable at this point in, in the game. Yeah, are we going to see a detonate, perhaps? Because he already played his Shatter. Crumble went, I think, to the bin earlier in the match. Yeah, there we see a detonate, Retin X. And, oh, Boomerang here. Brilliant move. That Boomerang, of course, Gideon had it in his hand still. Boomerang saving it. And that means that Gideon also doesn't take four points of damage. So this is really good business for, for Gideon. And it looks like Avert still has mana left to also use his Ring of Renewal. That's really good business for him drawing two more cards off of that ring. Because when you don't have any cards in hand, actually your Ring of Renewal just gives you two new cards because you have not, no card at random to discard. It's actually a pretty good card. And here we see Gideon taking on the turn. And there we probably see the disc again. So I don't think he's gonna play anything out. He's just playing the disc and passing turn, probably. What else is there in his hand? There a Fisher, perhaps, or not? It's hard to see. And yeah, just passing turn here to Frank. Frank, who hasn't done much ever since he popped that disc, and he's not going to do anything now. Just passing turn here, finding another swamp for me. Kind of makes sense that Frank doesn't want to play anything out with that disc on the table, and I'm doing the same, right? We're all a little bit passive. Because of that Nevenerals disc. Let's see what Avert is going to do. He's probably just going to use his Ring of Renewal and pass. Playing out of Birds of Paradise, interesting. Because the disc is on the table, it might be better just keep it in hand. Yeah, he's taking it back. He's saying, I want to discard it for my Ring of Renewal. But Ring of Renewal does it randomly so we see him shuffle up and gonna pick a card and okay <laughs> it's the same birds of paradise anyway that's a pretty good deal for avert you know a dumping a useless birds of paradise and gaining two fresh cards in return that means he'll have four cards in hand which is quite a lot for this stage in the game playing out another land is that oh that's an urborg interesting urborg has an interesting second ability you can tap it to remove first strike and a swamp walk ability and that can be relevant, of course. And there we see a major attack here from Avert on Frank. Frank dropping to 15, taking eight points of damage. So Frank has dropped. So Avert is highest now on 19, followed by Frank on 15. I'm on 11 and Gideon is lowest on 10. And he's using the disc right now. So, and I'm gonna use my greed one last time, which is very greedy. I'm dropping under 10, I'm on nine now, lowest on the table. But it's just too tempting to draw that one card. Hopefully it's a good one. Let's see what else Gideon can do. Tapping four, it seems. Or not, okay, counting his mana. Ooh, that's a good card, JM Daytome. That's, of course, a great card at this point in the game. He's got enough mana to use it every turn without any issues. Four and tap to draw a card. The book, the Gem Day Tome, is alive, by the way. So take a look at the art if you don't know what I mean. It's pretty cool. 
There we see Frank playing an island, tapping four. Ooh, that's annoying. Tonis' coffin. Such a good cart. We saw it earlier on the side of Gideon. Oh, look at this Cormus Bell. This is going to change the game. Insane. It's an artifact for four. It reads, treat all swamps in play as 1-1 one, one creatures. That means that all the swamps are now turned into creatures. And guess what? We're all playing with black. And I'm attacking full swing on Gideon. Do I have enough swamps to actually kill him? He's only on 10. I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 12, 14 swamps. I think he can block two. It's going to underground scene a swamp to block. So then he still takes 12 damage. I think this is enough. I think Gideon's gone. He's a goner. Does he have anything in hand to help him? He's got a Fisher, but that Fisher is not. It's over. Okay. Oh. Wow. Gideon is knocked out here by a Cormus Bell. I'm sorry, Gideon, but I just felt I had to do it with a Gem Tome. Looking at the board, he had a detonate to take care of it, but detonated sorcery speed. And there we see a fissure and also a desert activation by Avert. By the way, he has a desert, so he can use that to kill one of my swamps using a fissure to take care of my wall of bone. I'm feeling a little bit vulnerable right now. I need to kind of survive to untap again with that Cormus Bell. I've got so many swamps and I'm so looking forward to attack with my Swamp Army. Maybe I can knock out another player here. Avert's at 12 at the moment, counting my Swamps right now. It looks like Avert's got a Badlands and, or maybe two Badlands, oh, a Badlands and, he's got a Bayou, I think, and he's got a Swamp. So it's also three 1-1 one, one creatures. So he also has a Desert that he can use to kill 1-1 one, one creatures, but then you first have to take the damage, of course. And he also has a Mistress Factory there. Does he want to attack me? I'm on nine. I'm pretty low. Looks like Frank's looking something up here. Is he activating factory attacking me? No changing his mind. I think I'm using some politics here. Trying to convince Avert not to attack me. Tell him that I'll swing in Frank into Frank first. Trying to kill him because he's lower anyway. Ooh, disenchant. All my dreams and hopes are shattered. Well, not shattered, they're disenchanted, but it comes down to the same thing. Man, this is bad. This is bad. Look at my board state. It is horrible. There's a Deccan Black Blade, and it's 8-8 eight, eight right now on the side of Frank. Wow. Okay, okay, of course, this card we still I still had in hand, the Breeding Pit. Beautiful. Artist proved by Anson Maddox, so that means I'm going to get an 01 Thrall token and I'm recasting my Uncle Istvan. Okay, so I'm trying to kind of get that Istvan out that can block the Deccan and it can block whatever Avert wants to attack me with. So I have an 01 Thrall token and a 1 3 Uncle Istvan. And what is Avert going to do? Tapping a lot. Is he recasting his commander perhaps? Yes, that's what he does. That's a, a land, I believe, the other card from Fallen Empires, one of those green sack lands. So he's recasting Brother Rune X. All the commanders are back on the table. What is going to happen next here? It's Frank Stern. I'm pointing out my defenses. I'm saying, you know, it's probably best to attack Avert here. Of course, he's got Tonus' Coffin. Interesting card, Cabo Ghoul. Kabagul is uh, also a zombie now, by the way. It's from Arabian Nights, and it gets a plus one, plus one counter uh, at the end of turn when a creature died. And here we see a Jam Day Tome being used. And ooh, finding a Mirror Universe. This is pretty big. Mirror Universe, I can only use it during my upkeep, but I can sack it then and swap life total. So Frank's heist with 15, Aford's on 12. Who am I going to pick here? Frank seems to be the most dangerous player at the table. And here we see an attack by Avert. And I wonder, he's gonna attack me. I'm saying I can just block it on Istvan. It's probably better to attack Frank. Frank, of course, has that Tonus' coffin. I'm expecting him to use that on the end step of Avert or to use it when Avert's attacking him. And it looks like Avert is now reading the Gabagul. 
and passing turn. Ooh, we don't see a Tonsis Coffin activation. Interesting, it was kind of a free use of the Coffin because what happens is you can pay three and tap it, put a creature in the Coffin, then you can untap the Coffin, the creature comes back into play, but it comes back into play tapped. So Frank had the three mana open anyway. And there's an old man of the sea. Oh man, things are look and a Darylor. Things are looking really good for Frank, and that means really bad for me and also for Avert, I guess. That old man of the sea can steal my uncle Istvan, and that means that he can start swinging in. And I'm using my mirror universe here to trade life totals. Frank's gonna go down to nine. I'm gonna go up to fifteen. And it looks like I also found an anime dead. Oh, that Lord of the Pit would be a nice target. I've got that breeding pit. I just assume I have an anime dead since everybody is looking for the creatures in their graveyard. So many interesting cards. I could, of course, also use Preacher. Then again, if I choose Preacher, he can just steal it with his old man. But Lord of the Pit, of course, he can put in a box with Tans's coffin. It's. At least it's something, you know, worst case scenario, he puts Lord of the Pit in the coffin, which is not great, but at least then the coffin is being used. So I'm opening up some, you know, maybe some other attacks, who knows. Getting some more Thrall tokens and probably going to pass turn here. Oh man, what a hectic game. To be honest, after knocking Gideon out with my Cormus Bell move, I was kind of hoping to at least knock out one other player with the Cormus Bell, Swamps, and maybe, you know, find my way to victory. But the tables have really turned, and when I'm looking at the field right now, I have to say it's looking really good for Frank. The problem, of course, is A for not doing anything, just passing turn here. The problem, of course, is that, you know, Frank is old man of the sea that he's going to use right now. He's going to steal my Uncle Istvan. I kind of saw that coming. For some reason, you always hope that your opponent is not going to do the thing that's going to help him to win, but he does in this case, taking my Uncle Istvan. He can use my Taunus' coffin to put my Lord of the Pit in the coffin and out of the game. He's asking how many Thrall tokens I have. I have 301 Thrall tokens. And of course, Breeding Pit works great with my Lord of the Pit. There we see him swinging in. I'm just going to block on one of my tokens. That means a counter on Cabo Ghoul. And oh, an archaeologist! Oh, ho, ho. this is so bad! Guess what's in Frank's graveyard? It starts with chaos. It's in there. Oh, man. Attacking him now with Lord of the Pit. In response, he's using his Donis' coffin. I'm going to draw a card trying to find an answer that's not there because I'm playing black. I hardly have any... Any removal, artifact removal, I have no, none, no artifact removal. I should have played with Gator Phyrexia. I need to put that in this deck. Gator Phyrexia, make a mental note. Anyway, Lord of the Pit trapped in the coffin of Taunus. I guess it's a really big coffin. And here we see a tracker being cast by Avert. That means Avert can actually take care of the archaeologist. Track a really handy card, a 2-2, pay 2 green and 1, and it tracks a creature on the board and then deals damage equal to its power to that creature and also takes damage back of the power of that creature. It's kind of the first fight mechanic in Magic the Gathering. Really cool card. And here we see Avert actually attacking me, which really surprises me because clearly Frank is the big threat on the table. Then again, he knows that attacking Frank is going nowhere because he's got Uncle Istvan, so maybe he just wants to go for a second spot here. I mean, things are looking so good for Frank right now. He can use his Archaeologist, you know, tap two white, tap the Archaeologist, and he can get his Chaos Orb out of his bin onto the battlefield, and that's going to be another big problem. It's problem after problem after problem after problem. Oh man, I'm probably using some politics here. At least I'm still on 15. I don't think that he can kill me right now. Attacks with deck and attacking me with everything he has. Bad news here. Chumping the deck and taking six. Go to nine. And there he goes using the archaeologist. I can see a chaos orb coming in the future. And is that a strip mine? Wow. Avert has a strip mine here. Okay, now he's stripping the white mana. I wish he would have done that earlier. That would have saved us from a Chaos Orb. 
but maybe he just played it out or I don't know. Anyway, there's an anime debt now. Oh my God. Oh man. It, it's like Frank is only drawing good cards at the moment, which is not good because I'm playing an Uncle Istvan deck. Frank, I need you to slow it down. You know, Avert is playing Giants. I'm playing Uncle Istvan. Take it easy, please. And he's getting a Sarah Angel back. Oh, man. And there he's playing that Chaos Orb that he just got back out of his own graveyard. Oh, man. I am so dead. I am so dead. I'm on nine. Okay, playing a Soul Net. Maybe I can net some life. Finding an 0-1 Thrall. What can I do? I'm, I'm passing turn here. So, I mean, at least I've got the Gem Day Tome. And hopefully... I can, you know, draw it as long as I'm alive because I am drawing twice as many cards as my opponent. So I just need to stay alive and eventually I'll draw into something, I hope. I remember, by the way, because you see me tossing my cards over at Gideon that in my hand is a Swamp, I think, and a Howl from Beyond. So I only need one creature to go through and I can actually kill Frank because that's basically my goal right now. He's the biggest threat. I want my Uncle Istvan back. I want my Lord of the Pit back. But I don't think it's going to happen. Avert here trying to find a hole in the defenses of Frank. Not finding it and attacking me instead. That means that I'm going to go to 10 because I have to chum block with my Thrall token. And that's of course a big problem because now Frank untaps with his entire army. And guess how many blockers I have? The answer is zero. I have none. I'm probably going to get kicked out right now. I'm a little bit surprised here that... Ooh, finding another white. I think Frank can now use the Chaos Orb and then get it back with his Archaeologist. Wow. Of course, um, you know, perhaps Avert is waiting for Frank to use the Archaeologist so that in response he can kill it. Or, of course, if Frank activates the Chaos Orb, that's better than in response Avert can use the Tracker and kill the archaeologist. That's probably what he's waiting for right now. And look at this. Frank is using it. So he's not getting back the Chaos Orb. I wonder what he got back. It went a little bit too fast for me to see. A little bit surprised by this move. Then again, perhaps there's something really good there. Like a Jam Day Tome, for example. There he's attacking with a deck and he's attacking me. Two, four, six, eight. Okay, that means I'm going to go to, to two. I survive. Yeah, I'm still alive. And Avert's taking three damage from the Sarah Angel. He's dropping to nine. I'm surprised that I'm still alive, to be honest. Things are getting risky. At least I'm getting an 0-1 Thrall token at the end, but I need more defenses than just an 0-1 Thrall token. What can I find? And I'm just passing turn here. Oh, there we see the tracker activation went really quick. But there was a tracker activation from Avert killing the archaeologist. So that's at least one problem gone. I kind of feel that at this moment in the match, we really need to work together, Avert and myself. There's a two-headed giant that actually has trample. If he can swing in with that and he can find the right moment, I can use my howl from beyond and we could kill Frank. Now I have to convince Avert without giving away too much that he has to attack Frank at a certain point. Let's first see if I can survive this because I'm on two. I mean, chances are I'm just getting killed right now. One attack with the Sarah, I'm done. There we see a City of Brass by Frank. So what is he going to do? He's probably, I mean, he's probably going to kill me, right? Oh, there we see a Life Chisel. Is that the artifact he got back out of the graveyard? So Life Chisel reads, sacrifice a creature during your upkeep to gain life equal to the creature's toughness. It's actually kind of nice because one of the things he can do is um, next turn sack Uncle Istvan to Life Chisel, gain some extra life, and then it goes back to my command zone, right? And he can just steal something else with his Old Man of the Sea and sacrifice that again. And it's kind of using it as a life gain machine. There we see he's going to attack me with Gabal Ghul and Uncle Istvan. He's going to attack Avert. With a Sarah Angel, I think I can actually survive this. Just block the Cabo Ghoul, take a damage from Uncle. I would go to one, then gain a life from Solnet. I would end up at two. Right? Exactly, gaining a life, going back up. So I'm still at two. I'm really surprised here. 
But I guess if you're Frank, he's on nine. He needs his defenses up as well. I'm a little bit surprised that he attacks with Uncle Istvan because it's such a good blocker. And there's, of course, an extra counter on Kabogul. And, ooh, in the end step of Frank, I'm casting Howl from Beyond on the tracker, saying to Frank, to Avert, okay, use your tracker just to kill one of his beef boys. And is he going to kill Deck and Blackblade? If he does, by the way, I also gain two life from the soul net because Trekker's going to die. Deccan's going to die. And I wonder, maybe, um, you know, if you're, if you're listening to this, because I'm not, I don't play EDH that often, but can you also gain a life? Because technically the commander is going to the command zone and not to the graveyard. So I'm not sure if my soul net activation is correct here. So let me know if I'm making a mistake there. Anyway, lots of tapping happening here again. And there is a Cabal Ghoul. No, um, a Scavenger Ghoul. Sorry, not Cabal Ghoul. Scavenger Ghoul and a Rune Sword. <laughs> a Rune Sword. Oh, man. Just re read what it does. I'll put it on the screen for you. It's, it's ridiculous for six mana. But it's the He-Man Sword. I mean, I have to play it. I mean, Uncle Istvan has a giant axe, right? And I thought it's really cool to also play with the rune sword because any kind of an axe and a sword. Oh, man. The scavenger ghoul, by the way, is, is a pretty interesting creature. It's a zombie. It's a 2-2. Two -two. And uh, whenever a creature dies, you can put a, a counter on it and you can take a counter off the ghoul to regenerate it. So it's it's, it's quite an interesting card. It's a, it's a fun card from the core set that you don't see that often. And I'm really happy they made it... Uh, Oh, and here he's attacking, by the way, with his Daralor. I'm chumping it on a Thrall token. That means I'm going to gain a life. I'm going to go to five. But also I get a regeneration token on my Scavenger Ghoul. Oh, man. And look at that Ghoul from Frank. That's really big. The Cabo Ghoul. All those Ghouls are now zombies, by the way. Which is quite nice. Makes them a little bit more playable. And I think it's on flavor as well. So my life total is slowly sneaking up again. At least I'm on five, which is something. I still feel like I'm playing with borrowed time. Oh, and actually he was not attacking me with the um, Daralor. Sorry, he was jumping with the Daralor. I kind of missed that. Anyway, and here we see Frank now sacking Uncle Istvan to the life chisel, gaining three life. So it's Frank's turn at the moment. Frank's back on 12. And you're probably wondering, why doesn't he untap the Old Man of the Sea? Well, the way it works, you have untap, upkeep, right? And he's doing all this in his upkeep. So he had to keep the Old Man tapped to keep my Uncle Istvan so that he could sack it in his upkeep. And now he's going to go to his draw step. So everything that you just saw just happened before his draw step. And that's what I like about old school is that upkeep is still a really important part in the game. And all of a sudden, I mean... Frank doesn't seem to have that many creatures anymore. He's got the Cabo Ghoul. He's got a Sarah Angel, which is great because it doesn't have to tap when it attacks. And there are no flyers anywhere. Um, does he have enough mana to recast Deccan? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 mana. I think he could do it, but then he has to tap out, right? And he has to take a damage as well from his own city. Probably wants to keep mana open for his Chaos Orb. I wonder what he's going to do. Is he going to attack with the Sarah Angel? He probably is, right? He's like three free points of damage. Looking at his hand again, he's really in the tank here. He's got two cards in hand still. Maybe there's an interesting option for him. Tapping three. Ooh, Ashes to Ashes! Removes two non-artifact creatures from the game and does five damage to Frank. So Frank's going to go to seven. He's taking care of two of my creatures. Oh, no. My Cabo Ghoul is dead. And they're removed. I don't even gain life. Two, four. I think I'm dead. Am I dead? Am I dead? I think I'm dead. There's nothing I can do. That Cabo Ghoul is too big. I'm on six. Oh, Swamp. That's it for me. I am dead. This is it. End of the road. And then we also see Avert dropping down to three. Oh man, I didn't see that coming.
I was hoping to survive one more round and right now what should Aver do is on three, perhaps an alpha strike here. There seems to be an opening because Frank only has that Sarah Angel to block with. Wow, this is so exciting. He can attack with the two-headed giant. He's got a Mistress Factory and Bartle Rune Axe. And then he's kind of forcing Frank here to use his Chaos Orb. But if he misses the flip, Frank would still be on one, I think. So probably he wants to flip before he chooses blockers, kind of to check if he can kill the creature that he's flipping on. So he's going to activate Chaos Orb. He's going to flip on a two-headed giant. Okay. Let's see if this is going to work. Putting it on slow-mo here. What is going to happen? And, ooh, it's a hit. Oh, so much tension on this flip. Anyway, two-headed giant is gone. And he's going to probably jump block Bartle. Exactly. He's going to take two damage. He's going to go to five from the Mistress Factory. Oh, man. Avert still on three here. Look at that Cabo Ghoul. It's huge. It's a 7-7. Seven, seven. It should be an 8-8 eight, eight now, by the way. We keep forgetting the Cabo Ghoul. It should be way bigger, probably. So I hope when you're watching this that you can forgive all of our misplays. We're just having, having too much fun. And he's not attacking with the old man. Only attacking with the Cabo Ghoul. And... Oh, disharmony being played here. Oh, oh, oh. What if Frank would have attacked with the old man as well? That would have been so perfect for Avert here. Instead, all that Disharmony right now does, it takes target attacking creature from your opponent, right? And you get it untapped. Uh, and then it gives it back at the end of turn. And there we also see a Demonic Tutor in second main phase here by Frank. So it's really cool to see the Disharmony, but I mean, it's probably going to be game now. What is he going to look up, I wonder? If it would be red, he could like look up like a boring fireball, but this is more interesting. What could he find now? doesn't have red, of course. Brain Geyser could be an option. And what do we see? Just a big creature, maybe? I hope... Oh, this is so cool. Evil Eye of Orms by Gore. So it's a 3-6. And nope, nope, nope. There's a Chaos Orb. And oh, that's it. Okay, it looks like it's KO. Okay. Oh. Wow, and that's a victory by Frank Deccan Blackblade. Frank is winning this one. Oh, Deccan Blackblade, Frank, you got this, man. Congratulations. Who would have thought that your deck would get this? Especially looking at the start of this game, go all the way back to part one. Uh, but hey, man, I mean, looking at your deck photo, you deserve to win this. We didn't see Sword of the Ages, by the way. So I want a rematch and I want to see you win with Sword of the Ages. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. And, and for me, um, I think this is just a perfect Christmas video because it kind of shows why I like magic so much. For me, it's really about the gathering. That part of the game has always drawn me in just sitting together, playing this magical game, enjoying yourself. All your worries are, are somewhere away from the, from the magic table. You're just enjoying yourself, laughing, having fun, casting silly spells, reading cards of your opponent because you forgot what the card does or you've never seen it before. For me, that is really the fun, you know, having fun with friends and gathering part of magic for me is what makes it so great. And I hope that my channel um, kind of shows off that vibe as well because that is my intention to kind of show look guys this is old school magic this is how much fun old school magic can be um anyway i also would like to take this opportunity to kind of thank you for this fantastic year for timmy talks i don't do this often you know with my face on the camera on youtube uh, but I thought this is the good and the right moment to do it. It's almost 2022. 2021 has been a fantastic year for Timmy Talks. Uh, record after record, amazing watch times, uh, which gives me the energy to continue. You know, and I think, okay, people are really enjoying this. You guys are enjoying this. You let me know through the likes, through the comments, and even better, you're letting me know by sponsoring my content and my channel, which is fantastic because it means I can keep doing what I love to do. As you can see, by the way, I'm wearing my Christmas sweater 
sweater, sweater, it's hard, it's hard for me to pronounce that word. Anyway, I'm wearing this uh, because I want to wish you a very merry, merry Christmas and a happy new year. And thank you for watching another episode right here on Timmy Talks. And now it's time to go to the end scroll and meet the Timmy crew. Let's take a look at our amazing, wonderful, and wonderful patrons of Timmy Talks. Here we go. Ik het dus, ik het dus, zomaar gezien.